Hi there, I'm playing with Chunk again. Uh, as you probably have seen from my previous video, I was in vacation for a while, so that's one reason why I didn't make any new videos. But today I have this device here. And I think that's a quite interesting little box. Um, I got that idea because I just watched a video from Ave, A-V-E, or however you pronounce that, that guy that does some mechanical stuff, CNC stuff, and always takes tools, electric power tools apart, and he had a device very similar like that, and that was a mechanical tachometer. And this one is about the same thing, but it's electric. It has two connectors here, two wires go on here and here. And you can also see it's made for 220 volts AC, of course, because it's a frequency measurement device, frequency meter, and it's a purely mechanical frequency meter, and how it works I will show you right now. Let me just connect it to my old trusty Variac. Okay, let's crank it up to 220 and turn it on. And now you can already see how it works. As you can see, uh, there is a mechanical vibration at exactly 50 Hertz. Let me turn that so you can see that a bit better. Um, this instrument uses reeds, like the musical reeds of, a, of these tiny organs that those hand crank little organs you probably know. Um, and they are exactly tuned to to 45 to 55 Hertz with 50 Hertz in the center because it's a European model. An American model would have 60 Hertz in the center and it's used to measure frequencies. And if we look at that, let me turn off that again. You see there is a mechanical movement. It swings out when the uh, AC voltage has gone and it takes a moment to come on. And if you look exactly, the two reads left and right of the 50 Hertz are also uh, moving a little bit. And I think the one on the right side, which is higher than 50 Hertz, swings a little bit higher. Let's check that. I could, of course, just measure the frequency with the digital frequency meter, or I log in at the Swiss Grid website. That's the company that controls and manages the whole electrical grid in Switzerland, working together with all the other European uh, states and countries. And you can see uh, the actual frequency is 50.019 Hertz. And if I show you the meter again, at the moment we can see it clearly. I think it's clearly visible that, let me adjust that, that the read 
which has the higher frequency than 50 Hz is swinging a little bit more. Yeah, it's clearly more than the other below. So that means we are a little bit higher than 50 Hz. And at the moment it's 50.016 Hz. There is another number here on this display. It's called Netzzeitabweichung and our American friends will have fun with these long German names and words. Uh, to translate it, it means uh, grid time deviation and at the moment it's 10.5 seconds. What does this mean? Here on this chart you see Oops, my camera zooms by itself, something new. Here you see the actual frequency from 1656 to 1705, that's the actual time, that's now. And you see it goes up and down quite a little bit, but the margin is quite narrow, we have 50.1 Hz here and 49.9 Hz here. So the whole range here is 0.2 Hz. And I think that's about the maximum deviation de uh, which is allowed. No, I think it's half a Hz, I don't know. Um, but they try to keep it inside this range, of course. Now you can see we have a lot of points, a lot of dots here, which are above the 50 Hz line. That means at the moment the generators are running a little bit faster than 50 Hz. And that's the reason why we get 10 seconds in plus. Okay, these 10 seconds, how do they calculate that? Um, as you see, the short time uh, stability of the frequency is not very good. It goes up and down, up and down. But the long time uh, stability is very well, because they have a clock running on the uh, mains frequency. And they have a second clock running from a atomic clock, uh, it's an atomic clock receiver in most cases, and they compare the two. So if the mains clock is behind the atomic clock, they have to crank up their steam valves and let the generators run a little bit faster to compensate the loss in frequency and in time over a longer time. So the goal is to have a deviation of zero seconds. And of course that depends on how much the grid is, uh, how much load is on the grid. So if suddenly every person turns on uh, its uh, air conditioner or its, its stove in the kitchen at the same time, you would certainly see a drop because the regulation of this frequency is not that fast. The reason why I'm telling you that in such a detail is because last year we really had a problem with that mains frequency. And the problem was caused by two countries, Serbia and Kosovo, which are neighbors in this region here. Um, I don't know all the details, but it, the story goes about that. Um, Kosovo produced more energy, electric energy, than Serbia, and Serbia imported some of that electricity. And of course, they had to pay for it. And for some reason, they decided not to pay anymore, and Kosovo stopped delivering electricity. They just switched off the lines and Serbia had to import uh, electricity from other countries. Well, the problem is 
uh, the other countries countries don't have enough uh, capacity probably maybe it's in the summer maybe no i think it was in the winter time and all the heaters are running so that really caused a problem and uh, frequency dropped so much that many people in europe um, noticed that their clocks were ticking slower their clocks clocks were, were behind the real time so what kind of clock am i talking of for example this old radio clock here in my kitchen or the clock of my gas stove which is also running from mains frequency and if mains frequency is not correct if it's too slow the clock also runs slower and the deviation on that uh, point last year was five minutes or even six minutes so both clocks here were six minutes behind real time well i should have connected this instrument here during that time it would probably read some uh, interesting values maybe way off the 50 hertz at the moment we are still a little bit above 50 hertz but you know let's just look inside and see how it works Here you can see the build date, 1959 January, most likely. It's certainly not a software version. Well, the whole electric parts here are two coils which are connected in series. So we could theoretically reconnect them in parallel to make that unit work with 110 volts. Of course, we cannot do anything against the 50 hertz, so that works because these reeds here, they have, where is my pointer, you see they just swing like a mechanical vibration measurement. Um, they have some weights here, tiny little brass. Uh, parts that are probably soldered or glued to the to these fingers and then most likely yeah I think they have some marks on it oops I'm off camera some marks especially this one here maybe that one too and I think they are all hand adjusted to uh, resonate at the exact uh, frequency and they're all screwed in here so you could even replace one or two of them if they break 
probably one day in 500 years. And you can also hear it. I hope you can. Let me put my mic over here. It starts at 45 hertz and ends on 55 hertz. Of course, the sound you hear is uh, some harmonic of that, but you can hear how the sound is actually uh, raising from low to high. Well, and that's it. Two coils. There's a, an iron or steel plate here that concentrates the magnetic uh, force and that attracts the steel reads here and make them swing if the frequency corresponds with the frequency of the read. And that's how this device works. Fascinating, super simple. And as I said before, uh, AVE or AVE, however he calls that, has the same device but is purely mechanical. So you connect it to any kind of machine and it tells you how fast the motor runs or any other part because any moving part makes vibrations those vibrations are of course transmitted to these reeds again without any electric trick and uh, that's how a mechanical tachometer works and this one is the electric version of that with an additional electromagnet that uh, influences this reads. I think that's quite interesting. Now uh, I could also convert it to a lower frequency because that would be interesting to run it with my frequency generator to move the frequency up and down. Now with 220 volt, I have no chance to uh, operate that with my generator because that one only makes 20 volt peak peak. But yeah, mains frequency, quite an interesting story. And if you want to know more about it, well, uh, just have a look at, look at Swissgrid. They also have an English version of their page. And there is also the European Network Transmission Systems Operator ENZO-E uh, which also has a website with a lot of information about how uh, worldwide or European-wide power grid works. Okay, thanks for watching.